since the beginning of this pandemic, we've tried to update you as soon as possible about changes in the scientific data or the analysis. And so I must tell you this afternoon that we've been informed today that in addition to spreading more quickly, it also now appears that there is some evidence that the new variant, the variant that was first identified in London and the Southeast, may be associated with a higher degree of mortality. And I'm going to ask Patrick in a minute to say a bit more about that, because it's largely the impact of this new variant that means the NHS is under such intense pressure, with another 40,261 positive cases since yesterday. We have 38,562 COVID patients now in hospital, and that's 78% higher than the first peak in, uh, in April. And tragically, there have been a further 1,401 deaths. So it's more important than ever that we all remain vigilant in following the rules and that we stay at home, protect the NHS, and thereby save lives. But I also want to answer a key question that I know will be uppermost in your minds. All current evidence continues to show that both the vaccines we're currently using remain effective both against the old variant and this new variant. And so you'll also want to know that our immunisation programme continues at an unprecedented rate. 5.4 million people across the UK have now received their first, first dose of the vaccine, and over the last 24 hours we can report a record 400,000 vaccinations. In England, one in 10 of all adults have received their first dose, including 71% of over 80s and two thirds of elderly care home residents. Having secured orders for hundreds of millions of doses, the UK government has supplied vaccines to the devolved administrations according to population size. First doses have been administered now to 151,000 people in Northern Ireland, 358,000 in Scotland, and 212,000 in Wales. And I'm glad that the uh, government of the UK, the whole of the UK, is able to assist the devolved administrations in deploying the vaccine. And I know everyone across the country is grateful for the logistical skill of the British Army. There is much more to do, and the target uh, remains very stretching indeed, but we remain on track to reach our goal of offering a first dose to everyone in the top four priority groups by the middle of February. And I want to thank all the doctors and nurses, especially at the GP-led sites who are vaccinating at a phenomenal rate, as well, as I say, as those in our armed forces, uh, our local authorities, our pharmacies and volunteers who are making this extraordinary national effort possible. And I want to thank all of you who have come forward to get your jabs, because by doing that, you're protecting yourselves, your communities, and of course, our NHS. And I say to everyone, when that letter arrives, please don't hesitate to book that appointment and get this life-saving protection, because this is the best and fastest way for us all to defeat this virus and get our lives back to normal. I'm now going to ask Chris to do the slides. Thank you, Prime Minister. First slide, please. So the first slide um, is uh, the uh, Office for National Statistics data showing the estimated number of people testing positive for COVID-19 in England. Uh, and that has been on a steady upward slope since the uh, early part of December. But uh, I'm glad to say that in the, the most recent data, there has been a turning of the corner on that and the number of people with infections has gone down. But it has gone down from an exceptionally high level and their most recent estimate is we're still at a stage in England where one in 55 people have the virus. So there is a definite uh, signs of improvement, but from a very high level, remaining at a very high level, thanks to the extraordinary work that everybody has done together uh, to make sure people stay at home when they do not need to go outside. Next slide, please. 
This then uh, looks at the number of people in hospital uh, with COVID in the UK, uh, and it is increasing uh, all the time. Uh, it has been over the uh, last several weeks and is now at an extraordinarily high level, as the Prime Minister has just said. Uh, but there is now a sign of this beginning to flatten out. Uh, in some parts of uh, England, uh, particularly the southeast, the east of England and London, there's now signs of some reduction in the numbers going into hospital, but at an incredibly high rate still. Uh, in other areas, there's still some increase uh, in parts of the Midlands uh, and the north of England, uh, for, for example. But overall, there is now a flattening out, and we hope to see, uh, following the reductions from a high level in the number of cases, the beginnings of a reduction uh, of cases in hospital. But this will take uh, some weeks to work through the system until we start to see significant falls in the numbers in hospital. NHS staff are working extraordinarily hard across the whole country uh, because of the, ex the very, very large numbers of people in hospital with COVID. Next slide, please. Uh, and sadly, the number of people who have had a positive test for COVID and then died uh, shortly afterwards uh, is continuing to climb. And because this is uh, later, this, this is a delayed effect, so people get infections, then they end up going to hospital, get more severely ill, and then uh, sadly some of them die, most obviously uh, recover. Uh, the number of people who are dying has been steadily increasing and the most recent seven-day rolling average uh, is over 1,000 deaths a day. So um, this uh, is a very high rate, and it, again, it'll take longer to come down and probably will go up uh, for the, over the next week uh, because of the fact there's a delay between people going into hospital and some people uh, sadly dying. I'll, I'll now hand over to uh, Sir Patrick for some comments about the new variant. Thank you very much. So there are three major variants of uh, potential concern. The one that was first identified in the UK, one that was identified in South Africa, and one that was identified in Brazil, three countries, all of which sequence a lot, and so pick these things up early. I want to talk about the UK one because it's a common variant now, comprising a significant number of the cases. The first thing to say is that we have confidence that this is spreading more easily than the old variant. So we think it transmits between 30 and 70% more easily than the old variant. We don't yet understand why that is the case. It doesn't have a difference in terms of age distribution. So there's no preferential age. It can affect anybody at any age, similarly to the original variant, the original virus. But I do want to say a word about severity and mortality. When we look at data from hospitals, so patients who are in hospital with the virus, the outcomes for those with the original virus or the new variant look the same. So there's no real evidence of an increase in mortality for those in hospital. However, when data are looked at in terms of those who've been tested positive, so anyone who's tested positive, there is evidence that there's an increased risk for those who have the new variant compared to the old virus. Now, that evidence is not yet strong. It's, it's a series of different bits of information that come together to support that. And I want to put it into context as to what it might mean, but stressing that these data are currently uncertain and we don't have a very good um, estimate of the precise nature or indeed whether it is overall increased, but it looks like it is. And I want to give some context. If you took um, somebody in their 60s, a man in their 60s, the average risk is that for 1,000 people who got infected, roughly 10 would be expected to unfortunately die with the virus. With the new variant, for 1,000 people infected, roughly 13 or 14 people might be expected to die. So that's the sort of change for that sort of age group, an increase from 10 to 13 or 14 out of 1,000. And you will see that across the different age groups as well, a similar sort of relative increase in the risk. So that's what we're looking at. But I want to stress that there's a lot of uncertainty around these numbers and we need more work to get 
a precise handle on it, but it obviously is of concern that this has an increase in uh, mortality as well as an increase in transmissibility, as it appears of today. Let me so say also a word about vaccines. The first is that there's increasing evidence from laboratory studies that the uh, variant in the UK will be susceptible to the vaccines. And so I think that's increasing from a number of different sources, including looking at sera blood taken from people who've been vaccinated, showing that it can neutralise the new virus. And indeed, just two days ago, one of the manufacturers of uh, one, of the, uh, one of the vaccines, the Pfizer-BioNTech team, the BioNTech team actually, um, did studies showing that uh, there was very good neutralization of the variant virus by uh, the blood taken from patients, uh, people who've been vaccinated. So I think there's increasing confidence coupled with, I think, what is a very important clinical observation, which is that individuals who've been infected previously and have generated antibodies appear to be equally protected against original virus and new variant. So there's good clinical data as well to support the idea that the vaccines should be as effective against this virus as against the old one or there or thereabouts. So I think good news on the vaccine front. And then finally, a word um, just about the South African and Brazilian variants. Uh, we know less about how much more transmissible they are we are more concerned that they have certain features, which means they might be less susceptible to vaccines. We will see a lot of information coming out from different laboratories. It's very difficult to compare between laboratories on this data, and we need to get more clinical information to understand how much of an effect, if any, there is on the vaccine. But they are definitely of more concern uh, than the one in the UK at the moment, and we need to keep looking at it and, and, and studying this very carefully, which is what's going on in laboratories across the world at the moment.